Hey guys, welcome to another video from Foolish Engineer. Last time we have seen basic of SPI communication. This time we'll look into how does the data transfers from master and slave devices in the SPI communication protocol. So let's go for a ride. To start with that, we need to see the hardware and internal blocks of master and slave. There are shift registers in both master and slave devices. The slave and master are connected in such a way that the two shift registers form an inter-device circular buffer. Now, these shift registers operate in serial in, serial out mode. The output of the master's shift register is connected to the slave shift register and the output of the slave shift register is connected to the input of master shift register. This makes the connections which operate in a loop. The link which is connecting master shift register to input of the slave shift register is MOSI line and the link which is connecting output of the slave shift register to the input of the master shift register is MISO line. Well, SPI is a synchronous communication protocol. So there will be a clock signal for both master and slave for synchronization. And master generates this clock to get the control of the communication. For now, let's ignore the chip select line. Let's see how data is transferred from master to slave. Let's imagine the data in the master shift register is R7 to R0. And data in slave shift register is D7 to D0. Where D7 and R7 are the MSBs of the data. And R0 and D0 are LSB of the data. Master initiates the communication by generating the clock pulse. As soon as clock pulse starts, shift registers from both devices shift the first bit, that is, master shifts R0 and slave shifts D0 to the right. Well, the master and slaves are connected in ring, so the ejected R0 bit gets stored in the MSB position of slave shift register and D0 bit gets stored in the MSB position of the master shift register. This is how the first bit travels from master to slave and from slave to master at the same time. When the master generates the next clock pulse, the preceding bits get shifted from master to slave and slave to master. And that's how each bit travels over MOSI and MISO line in the SPI communication protocol. Well, in this protocol, each slave needs a dedicated chip select line. But this can be eliminated by using daisy chain method. So just one chip select line is connected to all the SPI slaves. And this daisy chain configuration is a little bit different. The MOSI line of the master is connected to the MOSI of the first slave. The MISO line of the first slave is connected to the MOSI of the second slave. Again, the MISO line of the second slave is connected to the MOSI of the third slave. And finally, the MISO line of the third slave is connected to the MISO of the SPI master. So this connection forms a daisy chain architecture of the shift registers present in each device. And eventually, this eliminates the number of pins which are needed for slave selection. Now let's see how data is transferred from master to all slaves. For that, the master will send the data to all the devices. For example, we need to send these data packets to the slaves with names 
Slave 1, Slave 2 and Slave 3. Let's call these 8 bit data as D1, D2 and D3. Now we want to send D1 data to Slave 1, D2 data to Slave 2 and D3 data to Slave 3. To do so, initially master needs to start the communication. So he will pull the chip select line to low which is connected to the all slave and it will start the clock signal. First he will send D3 data to the first slave in 8 clock pulses through MOSI line. As soon as this D3 data is stored in the first slave, master sends D2 data in next 8 clock pulses through same line. But the shift register of slave 1 already has D3 data. So in this clock signal itself, the slave 1 will send D3 data to slave 2 through MISO line of the slave 1. Later in next 8 clock pulses, the master will send D1 data to slave 1. Simultaneously, slave 1 will send D2 data to slave 2 and slave 2 will send D3 data to slave 3. And finally, the slave 3 will send the response of the data transmission to the master by using MISO line. And that's how data is transferred from different slaves using daisy chain configuration. Well, that's all about the easy part of SPI communication protocol. Next time we'll see advantages and disadvantages of this SPI communication with very interesting analogies. I hope you got something from this. If you haven't, you can watch the video again. Still if you don't, you can ask your doubts in the comment box below. Hit the like button if you like this video, subscribe to my channel and finally, thanks for watching.